last Sunday I, I got up and I was speaking about, man, these issues of today and how our world has changed so much. And I'll be honest, we haven't even scratched the surface. Uh, Sunday night we talked about different issues and talking about the Equality Act and how they're pushing this thing that's going to quiet churches and come to us and say, if these things are passed, there's certain things that churches cannot speak about anymore. And you say, that's crazy. That wouldn't have happened. Let me tell you, Satan has an agenda for our country, and a lot of things are happening that we never thought would happen. It's a changing world. This week, California lawmakers passed a a resolution blaming uh, religious people for high uh, rates of suicide among the LGBT community. They're literally turning around and saying the people we need to blame and sue for this are the churches. Yesterday, there was that mass shooting in El Paso. Today, or this early this morning, in the wee hours of the morning, there was the one, 10 people, including the shooter, in Dayton, Ohio. I've never seen so much division in a country. I mean, we used to be the nation that was sending out Christian education and, and had this strong godly heritage and revivals were coming out and sending out missionaries and churches on every corner and like Jeff was just saying things are changing the group of the missionaries is getting smaller getting into the schools is getting harder all these different things that are happening around us are changing you say pastor Tony I don't want to hear a negative message I promise you this is not a negative message this is being real this is the world that we live in it's not the same We cannot stick our heads in the sand and ignore the reality of where we are at or else we'll become no good for this nation that we live in. The less we have the presence of God, the more issues our nation will have. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25 and I'm going to be sharing some thoughts as as we get into this. But as uh, as we get into that, I, I want you guys to know that where we're at As a nation, the Bible predicted it exactly the way that it's happening. It should not come as a surprise to us. The Bible says this also, no, that in the last days, difficult, perilous times shall come. You know how difficult times will come? Because you have to transition from not so difficult into difficult. I'm not saying that things have not been complicated. But the Bible said there's going to be a time that there's going to be a switch, that things are going to get more complicated. The Bible says in Thessalonians, be not soon shaken. So let no no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a first of falling away. The Bible says there's going to be a time that people are less interested, churches are less full, people don't want to read, they don't want to pray, they don't want to hear, they don't want to change, they don't want to respond to the word of God. The Bible says that all of this will be signs of the end, that there's going to be a time that this comes. And I'll be honest, the very idea of sitting up there saying, the end of the world could be coming, people look at me and say, you are crazy. I'm telling you, you guys just do that. Just go somewhere and stand there and say, did you know that the end of the world is coming? They'll be like, you are a weirdo. You say, I'm crazy. No, I'm serious. The very concept of what God has said that he is coming back for the church has become a lost idea. Become numb to it. Jesus was talking about this himself. Jesus was teaching the disciples about the destruction of the temple. You got to understand the context of what he was saying. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came unto him and showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be uh, left here one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. Now I'm going to tell you, in Matthew 24, Jesus is speaking of the persecution of the apostles. He's talking about the destruction of the temple. Much of what he was saying applied to them and not us. And the reason why I say that is because I grew up hearing a lot of passages preached that were taken out of context and preached to us that was not meant to us. And I'm just saying that because sometimes we can misinterpret Scripture. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, the destruction of the temple? What shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? So he begins to say, Hey, we want to know when these things are going to happen. And the disciples just figure, Man, if that's going to happen, that must be the end of time. And Jesus said, No, there's a lot of things that are going to transpire. But that does not mean that all this means that the, uh, Christ is coming. Some of it was just depicting the the, the destruction of the temple. And inside this passage, we have wars and rumors of wars. We have false teachers and false prophets. prophets. We have persecution of the church, persecution of the apostles. 
Some of these things applied directly to them and some of them didn't happen in their lifetime. But he also said that the world would reject, reject Christ. The world becomes sick and sin. And from the time that Jesus said that till to the time of now, let me tell you, we have seen wars and rumors of wars. We have seen famine. We have seen pestilence. We have seen all of these things. But he uses the phrase into this in verse uh, 34, Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things become, uh, be fulfilled. We've seen much of this already. The world has gone through distress and trials and opposition He makes a statement in the middle of this, and I think this is so vital for us to hear. He said in the middle of him saying about this generation will not pass and the things that are coming, he said this, this generation, listen to what he was saying about this, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You know what he was saying by that? He said, let me tell you, I don't care how bad things get. I don't care what falls apart. The one thing that you can be confident is that my word will still be relevant to that day and age. It will not pass away. It will not lose its power. If we ever get to the day and age and start saying that was written by man, that's old-fashioned, that's out of date, we have lost concept of the power of the Word of God. The Word of God will never change. It will never lose its power, and it will always be relevant. I don't care what day and age we live in. But that's why I think the Bible says, for in that day shall not come except they are coming or falling away first. When people begin to say that it's not a big deal and does the Bible really mean that or who are you to say? And that's so old-fashioned. It doesn't matter how society changes, the word of God will always be relevant and it must be stood upon. Verse 36, he begins to illustrate this. He said, but that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels in heaven. I'll tell you, we see a decline and we see all these things happening. Have things become difficult and have things change I'll tell you, they have. But I don't know when God's coming back. And so often people say, and I'm not dogging this because I've done this myself, you know, and say, we are living in the last days. Now I turn around and say, it looks like it, but according to the Bible, I don't know. Don't judge me on that. All I know is whenever God's coming back, the Bible says, you won't know. Sometimes we sit there and people will write books and declare statements and all this. The one thing you don't know is when Jesus Christ is coming back. You don't know. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he'll come at a time that you think not. Now, are we living in the signs of the times? Can we see the evidence of what God said? Yes, it's all around us. But we could have two days or 20 years. I don't know. And the reason why I say that, because those that sit there and say, you better get ready, God's coming back tomorrow. If, God, if anybody tells you when God's coming back, the one thing you're guaranteed is that dude is wrong. He's wrong. Because the Bible says not even the angels in heaven know. So you think some dude writing a book knows? No, he does not know. But the Bible drops in something that I think is helpful for us to understand. And this is where I want to get with this. Verse 37, but as in the days of no worse, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, I know in the days of Noah, the Bible describes it being wicked. And a lot of times, that's the thing that we go to. It's so wicked that it must be. And the Bible describes that the wickedness was so great. Can I tell you? And the Bible describes the violence that was there. So when we get to that, we automatically think that because things have gotten bad, so that must be the signs of God coming. But I want to take this a little different. Do you realize that through the centuries, violence has been a theme of the depravity of man? How about you only have two kids, and one of your kids kills the other kid? Do you realize that your success rate of being a parent is one out of two? Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve had two kids. Where's your brother? I killed him. Sorry, mom. You know, you're grounded. You know, it's like, you say, what's the big thing? No, violence has been part of it. All the way from uh, the wars that we've had, the Roman Empire that makes sport out of killing people, Colosseums that were built for murder. During the time of the apostles, they would hang them on crosses. They would, they would, during the Holocaust, they would kill thousands of people at a time during the wars. Violence has been part of our history for years. Say, so what was the Bible talking about? I'm, 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 I, I, let's look at it. Read it again, verse 38. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying 
and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also shall the Son of Man be. Do you notice it didn't mention the wickedness? It didn't mention violence. He said, what will it be like? And he said, I'll tell you. Jesus says this himself, talking about in the days of Noah, as it was like this. They were living life to the fullest. They were so consumed with everyday life that not one of them thought about the judgment of God. Nobody was thinking about the rain. They had a pastor there in that time that was preaching the word of God. Nobody was listening. Nobody was changing. Nobody was acknowledging. Nobody was running. They just didn't care. I talked about just two points and we'll close with this. God was giving us a warning of the last days, of the condition of the last days. Here's our challenge. This is what I'm going to ask you. Will we rise up for this generation? Number one, we must rise above the apathy of this generation. You see, what he was describing is they were just going from day to day. They were meeting people. They were making plans. They were going to dinner. They were enjoying their weekends. And the Bible describes in 2 Peter 2.5 that he was a preacher of righteousness. They still said somebody standing there, God, God's coming. Judgment is coming. It's going to rain. It's going to fall. And the entire time they're building this giant ark. And the ark is getting bigger and bigger. And that they can hear the hammer. And they can hear the nails. And they can see the wood. And they can see the change. You know what everybody else did? Nothing. They ate. They went to weddings. And in our culture, they'd be like, they stopped at Walmart, they went home, they had dinner, they grabbed coffee, they went to the game, they just lived life. Nobody cared. Nobody was stirred. Not until it came, and then everybody was like, oh, we get it now. And the Bible describes even in Revelation about the end times, about becoming lukewarm. He said, they're not cold or hot. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You know why? Because you have become apathetic. Here we talk about the wickedness, and the Bible says the wickedness of that day and the perilous times and all this. Do you realize one of the signs of the coming of Christ that he was talking about is when, the, when Christians in the church gets into a slump that nothing's a big deal any longer. Where we can say Jesus is coming soon. We need to repent of our sins. We can have empty altars, dry tears, we don't, we, don't, we don't respond to anything. We're not fasting. We're not praying. I'm not trying to beat us up here. I'm just trying to be truthful. It used to be that we could talk about the coming of Jesus Christ and time things are coming. And man, we fill the altars and we're going out spreading the word and we're witnessing. And let's just be real. It doesn't really phase us anymore. And the Bible said in Revelation, he said, they become increased with goods and they have need of nothing. The problem is with us as Americans is we just have it good. We're comfortable. I don't know how we would respond to persecution, but may, maybe it's going to take a little bit of something to stir us up. But he starts talking about the condition of the day and age and the apathetic attitudes that was there and we struggle today being committed to church. We struggle being faithful to ministries. We struggle living sacrificially. We struggle to pray. We struggle to fast. We struggle with sin. And the Bible says in Revelation, he didn't just say that we should not be conformed to the world, but he said, be zealous and repent. Literally meaning the condition that the church needs to be is on fire and passionate, striving for God. Are we? Am I just being real? We talk about the signs of the coming, and God says, you know what, I'm going to come? He said, when everybody is just doing their own thing, and they've completely lost their passion and zeal, the world can do it all day long, but how dare we as Christians, because we have the truth and we know he's coming. He says in this, he said, two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, one shall be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, the other shall be left. And then in verse 42, he says a word that should shake us. He said, watch. Watch. He means to stay awake, to stay alert, to pay attention. 
to where when you see the things changing, you see the complications, you see the news, that it stirs us up in such a way where we open our mouths, we run to be faithful, we come together, we lift up Jesus Christ, it affects us in our heart and it comes out in our actions. Watch therefore, for you know not the hour your Lord cometh. We must rise above the apathy that is in this generation. Number two, we must rise to the opportunity for this generation. Let me say, and I'm, I'm speaking to myself with all of this, guys. I am not up here going, not at all. I get so wrapped up in talking about how things have changed. Have you done this? I do this all the time. I get upset and I say, man, things aren't what they used to be. I remember when everybody would just be faithful to church because they knew to be faithful to church. I remember when people would sign up for things and they would show up because there was a commitment. I remember, I remember, I remember, and I'd get so upset. Things have just changed so much. I remember when people used to respect the American flag. I remember when people used to respect authority and presidents. I remember when we would stand for ladies, open doors. I remember all that stuff. Say, things have changed, things have changed. Uh, I thought of this. I remember when my kids used to crawl up in my lap and I'd fall asleep in my arms. My nieces were over in my house a while back, and I I love that. They they would come over and they they would ask me to read them stories and things like that. And I started looking back, and if you got this picture, this is this is my, my kids long time ago. And I remember when Morgan would fall asleep and I'd carry her out to the car. I remember when the boys would want to play with Nerf guns. I remember all that. And I'll be honest, I sit there and reminisce so much that I get broken hearted thinking about how things have changed. But can I tell you where I'm at as a father right now? This is where I'm at as a father right now. I'm the little one. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the, little, the, the little bald guy at the end. And my kids are not babies anymore. And I started thinking about where, where we're at as, as a nation, as a church, as people or whatever. We're sitting there that this is where we're at. This is the culture. This is our generation right now. This is who God's given me. And right now the challenges are different and their life is different. And the things that I have is totally different. And I'll miss out on every second of it if all I'm doing is reminiscing, wishing I was way back over here when they were babies. Let me tell you where I'm at as a pastor right now. As a pastor right now, God has planted me in 2019. And the world is a mess. And God told Noah, he says, you know what, you might not like this, and I'm telling you that this world is in a mess, but I've got a job for you to do in the mess. And I don't mess up, and I know what's going on, and I know these things must come to pass, but Noah, I've called you out right now in this generation for this time to build a boat. And they're going to think you're crazy, and nobody's going to jump on board for you, and you're going to do it for a long time, and you're going to preach, and nobody's going to respond. But I tell you what, I'm going to use you in a great way, because this is where I placed you, Noah, for this generation. Esther was called out. She was placed in a messed up situation, in a messed up society. She's pulled out of her comfort zone. She's pulled out of her home stuck into a kingdom to be married to a man she didn't want to be. They rise up in the middle of that and said, we're going to kill all the Jews. The problem is they didn't know that Esther was a Jew. Esther is literally married to the king as that nation makes a decree to wipe out everybody that she knows and loves. The problem is if she was to go before the king, that they would just kill her. They didn't tolerate that whatsoever. Mordecai and all of them are weeping because they're going to die, these men, her uncle. And one day, Mordecai gets a message from God and and sends it to Esther and says, Esther, God has you where you're at for right now. You are here for such a time as this. In the middle of the mess, in the middle of the distress, in the middle of the chaos. The problems of our nation are not going away churches will not be what they were at one point. 
We see 4,000 churches closing their doors every year. We see people giving up and renouncing Christianity. We see churches changing and flying flags in front of their churches that we never thought we would ever see. They're, They're denying things that are in the Bible. Things are changing before us. But then God says to generations, to people, and he looks at us, he looks at me, and he says, hey, I know what's going on. But you are here for this mess. We've got to embrace, or I don't have to embrace the sin one bit. I don't have to embrace the garbage of this world one bit, but I will embrace the opportunity that God gave me, whether I'm Daniel in the lion's den, whether I'm Gideon standing on the hill, whether I'm Esther busting through the doors, or I'm Noah building the do- the do- uh, boat. It was a boat. <laughs> I am Pastor Tony leading a church in 2019. I'm not Daniel and I'm not Esther. I'm Tony. And this is where God's put me for this opportunity. That's why I'm here. So we can either sit there and go, things have changed so bad. And God says, I know. I see it. I knew from the beginning of time. And when I created you, I created you for that. So rise up and get ready to be the church for this generation. Because God makes no mistakes.